and for Media Watch now. And James Creedon has Hi, made Laura. it through the transport strikes it's... and the gridlock to be here in the studio. Um, right. It's pretty bad out there, isn't it? It is. I even got a small electric shock. Oh, but goodness. I won't, <laughs> I won't focus on it. It's not about me. <laughs> So but I was one of the many caught up in this. Yeah, there's been a lot of reaction online. There has. Said. I'll show you some of the images because the travel chaos is part of it. Uh, uh, this is one image uh, that went, went up on social media today showing uh, people trying to get into... A, oh, horrible. This is a suburban train. It's not the metro. This but is the RER, like, right? Absolute mess. I think it was at Transilien, which is, goes a little bit further still. These, this is the, the suburban rail network oh. around Paris. And it was just nightmare oh, stuff. Oh, people because just trying to get to work. The thing is, last week, uh, a lot of people knew that this was coming yeah, they, they took their off, days they? off this week there was uh, an air of excitement almost that's it's right like, wow. it's like oh strike <laughs> nothing like that to bring people together except when uh, no one can get anywhere and <laughs> gridlock so a lot of people have been tweeting today about, about their <laughs> frustrations I present you with the public transportation in Paris and you have an empty <laughs> hand and a pair of shoes and indeed people are walking to and from work including our very own business correspondent that's right she walked all the way across Paris today did she well done Kate Moody yep she was talking about it. I'm, I, yeah. I'll have to kind of discuss well, with her it. later. Uh, not the only one. There's other people walking as well. Today's mood as I woke to the lycéens, or secondary school students, across the street singing the Marseillaise and barricading the entrance to the school. <laughs> so it's not just <laughs> the rail workers. You never forget it's what everybody. country you. <laughs> That's it. You do feel particularly... Uh, in France at a moment like this. Now, uh, this, this, you know, th there were then those criticising the policing of the massive amounts of people in the streets uh, saying, mm -hmm. uh, mainstream media will never show you this video. Um, I think we count as Oh, we've seen that one quite a lot today. <laughs> why? why? <laughs> so sorry to disappoint, oh, what a shot, but uh, we, we, you know, we, we are... Oh, they're saying that we usually only show the violence and the stuff getting smashed up. Yeah, well, anyway, look, the, the, oh, I, think, I think a lot of those pictures do make it into news bulletins. 800,000 people, according to the unions. More like 300,000, according to the police. That's right. So in this one is expected to go on and on. It is indeed. So there's, there's, a, there's a lot. Now, some reporters and journalists covering, uh, covering uh, events were unhappy about this as well. Apparently, mm -hmm. several were injured. So the, you have reporter or reporters in... Angry reporters, <laughs> reporter en colère, tweeting about that, as well as various other associations uh, saying that... This it's, injured it's by... a bit injured by um, well what they're saying here this is a attack France which is quite a large um, um, association 24 journalists in, they're talking about the 5th of December so last Thursday oh, okay. uh, and they're talking about uh, very various other aspects of heavy handed policing anyway that's that's uh, the coverage is going global um, mm -hmm. on this uh, Laura this is a piece in the New York Times that went up online last night what what they're saying is that Emmanuel Macron has really taken a big risk in term, in tackling pensions and retirement, which is such a touchy it's issue. It's never gone at well a time, for anyone, has it? At a time of economic sort of uh, yeah. difficulty. And so they're, they're being somewhat uh, tongue-in-cheek here uh, with this headline. With France in uproar over pensions, Macron may need one early. In other words, this is sort of make and break for his presidency. And depending on how this goes over the next few weeks, uh, if, 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 the, if the unions and, and the protests still uh, remain quite, quite belligerent, uh, it, it, could, it, it could be uh, the, the death knell of many aspects of his presidency. Uh, Who's going to blink first? That's, that's it. Question. But it is a game of chicken. It's a, it's a kind of a battle of wills. And we are, of course, coming up to the Christmas holidays. Yeah. Lots of people are hoping to travel. Oh, God. I really, so, I really, this is where, this where it gets, it gets really uh, irritating. Uh, what else do we have on this? Uh, there's a, the, the man in charge, in fact, of overseeing a lot of the pension reform issues, he's been in a bit of hot, hot, yeah. hot water uh, in the last few days. Basically, in his uh, declaration of transparency to the government, he kind of failed to mention that he was on the board of... Uh, an insurance and an insurance companies yeah. insurance company so obviously that's disastrous in terms of the image of the government management of this reform he's also now stood down from another board where he was earning some 5000 euros a month so there's an effort i think to put out that fire so that uh, reforms can, you know, the, 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 at least the government can attempt to push through the reforms. I thought it was worth uh, yeah. worth pointing uh, this out as well. Um, a lot of people are angry that there has been no response from the government since last Thursday. Are we so going to hear from the government tomorrow? We're going to hear from the government tomorrow. Okay. Edouard Philippe, he will speak tomorrow, I but some people saying we'd rather speak to him now, earlier. I usually wrap things up at the end of the bulletin like this. Yes. That's right. My notes. I did that very well. Thank you very much. But some people are not quite so good at it, are they? Well, I thought this was quite quite amusing. It went up on, uh, One of my on many Twitter earlier. Now, uh, you, you've, you've heard of um, Chris Ship of ITV. He's a royal correspondent, amongst other things. Uh -huh. Now, get a, get a load of this catastrophic 
paper shuffle oh, uh, at the end that's of a that's a classic. bulletin. Now, so he starts off lifting there up the go. sheets, I'll you know, this. it yep. looks somewhat promising, yeah. but oh. then then you see all of these kind of loose sheets falling. Oh, I hate it when that happens. <laughs> Chuck it in the bin. Now, I wonder at what point he decided it was just not going to work out and just to kind of <laughs> dump them all on the floor. But it's, it's gone slightly viral. Um, I've even had a brief, <laughs> I've even had a brief interaction with him myself, uh, telling him that I thought it was catastrophic and he said that he's... Uh, <laughs> going to do a workshop or something like that but anyway it, it is the sort of um the must-have moment at the end of a news bulletin That's, and you want to have it well practiced do you remember the, executed do you remember the presenter who was standing up by a big screen with what he thought was an ipad oh, and it was actually gosh. a block of printer paper that was my yes <laughs> <laughs> running up. running to the studio a little bit uh, a little bit uh, but yes the old paper late. shuffle you have to get them in order before you bang them on the desk that's, that's it my there tip. you go it's all simple. right simple james <laughs> thank you very much indeed good luck Thanks, getting Laura. home tonight james creedon there